Hey guys, welcome to another video. <sighs> it took so much in me to sit down and film this video and the only reason I have makeup on today is because I did a very tiny baby sprinkle that I wasn't planning on doing. But um, yeah, so I just did that today and I have just been like so exhausted. So I guess I'll just give you like a little update about where we're at with the pregnancy, how everything's going. Cause I know a lot of you are pregnant alongside me. A lot of you also don't have any children at all, or you already have children, but no matter where you're at, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe if you enjoy my content and give this video a thumbs up and let's get into it. Um, so I think it was a few months ago, I did a like fitness and getting in shape while I'm pregnant like video. And um, sorry, my boobs actually are gonna be quite distracting in this video. I think they're just really out there today. <laughs> this doesn't really fit. Um, but anyways, give you something to look at while I'm talking. Um, so I did like a fitness like update video um, a few months ago. And so I kind of wanted to like, um, give an update there. And then also, um, just life in general pregnancy. I'm 36 weeks, uh, as of today. So by the time you're seeing this, I'm probably going to be 37 weeks. I think I might be uploading this next Monday cause I didn't, I missed today's upload. So last week, sorry about that. Um, but I'll talk to you all about all that and why and everything in a minute. Um, and then I also wanted to give you guys like, just like, um, kind of an overall idea of like what my like birth plan is um and kind of talk about like what i'm doing am i doing a birth center or am i not like what what are my plans so um because i know a lot of people have been very curious about that because of how everything went down with my last pregnancy and if you don't know anything about that then <laughs> i recommend that you start there because that was a pretty traumatic birth um and Things happened that I didn't even know were possible to happen. My pig is walking around outside in the rain. It's like sprinkling, starting to sprinkle. She's gonna go find some mud right now, watch her. There's no mud to be had yet, but there could be if the rain keeps keeps going. Um, I am also in my new bedroom that obviously, as you can tell from this right here, has not been designed really or decorated yet. Like we got these bedside tables that I'm going to get rid of. I don't like the, the way that they look. So I need to do a tour of this area, but I think I'm going to wait until our closets are done. They're like installing like our closets on like August 16th and 17th, which I don't know if this baby's gonna be here yet or not by then. But anyways, I wanna show you guys. I just have, there are a lot of things that still need to be done in here and by a lot, like not many when you talk about like where we came from and where we're at now, but like decorating anyways. Like I have no throw pillows, that's a problem. We know that. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, I have just been like feeling so tired lately. It has been um, difficult to get a good night's sleep. Like this baby moves around so much and um, it's been a lot with that and just like trying to get it comfortable is, has been difficult. And like with my first pregnancy, I could sleep until whenever I wanted. You know, I work from home, um, I have that luxury and I was able to sleep in and this baby, I can't. Like I have another child to take care of. So I haven't really been able to sleep in. Um, and then the weather guys, oh my gosh, if you live in San Diego, it has been like, or just anywhere that you have experienced this type of weather, you probably know, but like, it makes you want to do nothing. Like even some of my friends who are like, like not pregnant are like, I just don't want to do anything. And I was like, yeah, I can relate. So not only am I like just feeling kind of heavier and achier all over, um, which it isn't bad. This is like definitely an easier pregnancy even than with Harlow and Harlow is pretty easy up until the birth and the labor and everything. But, um, just been like with the humidity and the heat lately, it's been in the uh, triple digits and I've just not been wanting to run my AC a lot cause I don't want an insane electricity bill. So I've been keeping it like 78 in the house or like 70, it's at 75 right now. Cause I had people over and this feels comfortable to me. Um, but like with 78, I was just like, Oh my gosh, I like with being pregnant, you have so much extra blood in your body and you're just hot. And so with the humidity and the heat, I've just been like, and the, just being tired in general, it's like made me more tired and like so unmotivated to do anything. And so I've just been kind of like not wanting to do jack shit every single day. And, um, I've also been like 
nesting gnarly in the sense that like I want to clean everything like I want to scrub everything I love the smell of all I mean I've always been like this for the most part like but not like a little bit like not to this extent but like I'm wanting to scrub and clean everything like I love the smell of the cleaners which is probably not super great I love my freaking fabuloso I love my disinfectant like I just want to clean and sweep and mop and like do laundry and like huff my laundry and like I just find cleaning things to do all day long which is weird because you think when you're tired you don't really want to clean but I force myself to do it anyway so I've just been cleaning bathrooms and like cleaning all my animal stuff and like I've just been cleaning like crazy which I don't know if anyone can relate to that like am I just alone here like and one of my friends today was like you're nesting that's nesting and I'm like seriously like I didn't even put two and two together until she said that so needless to say um my last fitness video, I was trying to go to the gym about four times a week, and then I just have slowed down because I just have had kind of um, somewhat intermittent childcare. Um, my nanny, I'm not going to share anything too personal, but she's had family things going on and a loss in her family, and so we've been trying to be as flexible as possible. So she's, you know, had to take time off um, for that, which very important. Um, so that's kind of left me here and there though, having to, um, not really being, having the opportunity to film. And honestly, when I had, have had the time to film, it's been hard to just sit down and film. Like right now, I was like, I just got to get in there and do it right now. I've got makeup on, let's just do it. Um, and I usually, I love filming. I just, I'm feeling so lazy. So anyways, so alongside that, and just trying to like get in like day dates and things with Nick, like before the baby comes and like so much cleaning, there's so much cleaning to do. Um, it's just been, uh, it's been difficult to like get to the gym and then my parents were here for a week and like every morning I was like oh I'm gonna go because they're helping me with Harlow I like just want to hang out with them or not go because it's so hot so I have not been doing very well I would say I have been averaging maybe one day at the gym a week lately which has not been ideal I've been wanting to go four days a week um, I've also been about the past week it's been very hard to stand on my feet for as long as I am. I'm pretty much on my feet all day long because I'm cleaning um, and I'm taking care of the animals. I'm taking care of Harlow. I'm cooking. I'm organizing. I'm folding laundry. And so I've just been standing a ton. So the idea of like going to the gym in the morning and standing and doing like my like Stairmaster and stuff has not been appealing to me. So I really haven't been wearing my Apple watch um, or tracking really like I was before I was like tracking like every day I would be tracking my movement and that's kind of fallen to the wayside and I'm not saying I won't pick it back up again um, we'll see how the child care situation is but we are kind of getting down to the wire I guess I could almost go into labor at any time now at 36 weeks so um, yeah and as far as the diet goes I have been craving coca-cola like something terrible so i got little mini cans um i've never been the person to drink like a whole coke like before i was pregnant i would drink like a coke a month maybe two and just limit myself but like i've been having to have that like fizzy flavor of coke like kombucha kind of does it for me but I don't like like LaCroix and stuff. So that's been gnarly. So, um, and I have been like eating a little more fast food than I would like to just because we've been like out and about and on the go. Um, and I just haven't had any energy or want to meal prep, which has been annoying because that's what I want to do, but I don't want to do it. Does that make sense? Like I want to have that there, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> so I unfortunately have not been super great at the gym and have not been super great on the diet, but I have not been eating a ton. Like I don't crave much right now, except for some Mexican food and like a Coke. Like I like everything that like nothing sounds good to me. I've been eating a shit ton of pickles. Those always sound good to me, but like nothing really sounds good. Like even my junk food just like doesn't sound good. Like Taco Bell sounds good. Um, carne asada fries without the carne asada sounds amazing with some fries or some fries. I mean a Coke like, so anyways, fitness wise and diet wise hasn't been amazing. Um, but I did get my shit together and do a maternity shoot actually did about three of them. Um, so you might've seen them get posted on Instagram. So feeling good about that. So that's kind of where we're at with the fitness stuff. I haven't actually weighed myself for a little bit, but I know I talked about like weight and whatnot in the last one. So I will pull up when I, I, I was actually going to weigh myself this morning and I forgot. Um, I like to do it in the morning before I've like 
eaten a bunch of stuff and like had tons of water throughout the day. So water intake has not been super great either. I need to fix that as I'm, so as I'm literally drinking a diuretic. It hasn't been great fitness and diet, but it could be worse. Um, it's not really exactly where I want it to be, but. So at 33 weeks, I, so this is three weeks ago, I was 172.2. And when I started my pregnancy, I was 156 pounds. So I still hadn't lost weight from Harlow. Um, and I'm five, eight and a half, uh, five, nine. I say five, nine, I'm really five, eight and a half. Um, so I have not gained much weight. I mean, what is that? One. 72.2 minus 156. Uh, that's definitely not accurate. I did something wrong in the calculator. It said like negative 138. 72.2 or one seven, no, sorry. 172.2 minus 156. That's 16.2 pounds. So that was three weeks ago. I need to weigh myself. Um, I'll pop it on screen where I'm at right now, but that's with not really doing the gym and diet stuff as well as I'd like to. Um, I just started kind of stretching again a little bit, uh, which I probably should have been doing this entire time. I really should, but like my sacrum kind of hurts a little bit and getting on the ground just sounds like not that fun. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's where we're at with that. So let's go ahead and talk about my birth plan and I'll try and make this like as quick as possible because I feel like it is. It's kind of a quick conversation. I did talk a little bit about this on um, YouTube live if you caught that one. Um, I kind of went over it and talked about it a bit, but let's go ahead and talk about it now and I'll kind of tell you what I'm hoping for and what, what I'm going for. Alrighty, I literally just filmed this entire part almost about my birth plan and whatnot and now I had to switch to a different camera which, why my skin is, which is why my skin probably looks a little more smooth. This camera smooths it a little bit. I'm having issues with my other camera. I just, I guess I need to send it off to Sony. It's kind of frustrating. Basically I deleted the whole clip or like made it like unopenable. Um, so let's just go ahead and start again. <laughs> okay, so you may or may not have seen, I have a whole video about the birth story of my daughter Harlow and it was traumatizing. It was a pretty traumatic birth. Um, have there been worse? Yes, I'm sure. Absolutely. But, um, it wasn't ideal. So there's a few things like, so just to give you the like short of the long, um, I'll link it. If you guys want to watch that, pause this, open a new tab, check it out, whatever. But, um, essentially I was planning on giving birth at a birth center. I paid $6,500 to do so, um, which I didn't get back. <laughs> um, and I went into labor and I was in labor for almost a week. Um, my water broke and she hit, was born 62 hours after my water had been broken, which is like way too dangerous for me and her. I didn't know that at the time. So, um, I also didn't know that like when you, go into labor and like your contractions like come I just thought like your contractions pretty much always get closer together and that's just how it goes I thought it was always like that I didn't not I did not know that like it was a possibility for your contractions to like get closer together and then space out again like I didn't know that that was even a possibility so that was definitely news to me and different um and so for this time around, um, I'm gonna do things a little different. Um, if I had had, if I had tried to have Harlow at my house, I don't think that Harlow would be here today. I don't think that she would have made it. If you saw her birth video, I was vlogging and showed the moment she was pulled up and she was just completely lifeless and purple and not making a peep, which was like, it just made me cry when I like edited that. It was just so, emotional to watch and see. Sorry, my thong is like up my ass and it's like itching. Oh, okay, I think I got it sorted out. Um, so it's funny because like the way that that all went down, Nick feels like he would be comfortable doing a home birth now, which I don't understand at all. I'm completely the opposite now. I don't think I would ever try that at home based on how that went. Because had I been here, I don't think I would have Harlow. I think she would have passed away. So um, I am going to be giving birth down at um, Jacobs in La Jolla, UCSD. I don't know if you say like it's a UCSD hospital or what, but they have a birth center and then they also have their hospital. And in between is like a little park or something with plants, I don't know. but. 
basically you can give birth at the birth center or the hospital, or if you start at the birth center, you can move to the hospital if you feel like you need an epidural or maybe things aren't going the way that, you know, you need some intervention of some sort, it's all there for you. So um, I, it's a little bit further than where I delivered Harlow, but I had a pretty awful hospital experience um, with Harlow as well. So um, I talked about all of that in her birth video, I believe, but like basically like I was at Scripps and they like didn't change my sheets. I was like in the same bloody sheets for like 24 hours after I'd given birth to her. I had to ask for my trash cans to be emptied because they were just overflowing um, the heater or the AC did not work in the room. It was so hot, so hot. Um, just so many things. Like I would never give birth there again. Like I felt like I was in prison. Like it was not pleasant. Like the birth experience on its own was traumatic. And then the room and the, ser like the, I shouldn't say the service. The service was like the nurses were great. Um, the team who drew blood from Harlow's heel, fucking awful. Like I think I talked about it in that. But anyways, if you want to hear more about that, it's in that video. I will link it for you. But if everything progresses well, I lose my mu mucus plug, I go into labor, my contractions are kind of doing what they're supposed to do and going down like normal, um, I will, or like, you know, continuing progressing um, as they should, I would like to go to the birth center. The birth center rooms have like, they're so beautiful, like just everything's super new at that hospital and um, they also have a really good NICU rating. I think it's a three. Um, I think it goes from a one to a five. I could be incorrect on that, so don't quote me, but most hospitals do not have a five unless, unless it's like a super specialty center as I understood it when I researched. A four is amazing. A three is great. A one and a two, not so great. Usually your child would have to be, and I shouldn't say usually, sometimes your child would have to be transported to a hospital with a higher NICU um, because they have different machines and things like that. that a one and a two don't have. Not an expert in that area, but I did like that um, Jacobs was a three because I don't think Scripps is, I think it's a two. I could be wrong, but I, I thought it was a two. Um, so if everything's going well in the way that it should go, I would like to go to the birth center and give birth naturally. They do have like three remedies for pain. I know one is, um, uh, laughing gas, um, which I'm not a huge fan of. I've had it before for my veneers and it was like, made me feel weird, kind of like weed makes me feel. <laughs> so um, I didn't love that, but this would kind of be a way different environment than a dentist's office. So it could be different. So there's that and then they offer two other types and I don't really remember what they are. I have my next appointment on August 7th. I haven't seen the doctor since I was 15 weeks. So this will be my first one. Tried to make this appointment a month and a half ago and they have been booked. So August 7th it is. So I'm gonna ask about all that when I'm there, but they've got the birth center um, and then they also have the hospital right there. So if things are not going the way that they're supposed to go, then I will go to the hospital. I will do the whole epidural situation. I'd like to stay away from Pitocin if I can. Um, that causes you to have like really strong contractions that can stress your baby out and which can lead to kind of a chain reaction of events where your doctor will say, I think we need to do a C-section. I would like to avoid having a C-section if possible. If that's the only safe way to get my baby here, so be it. But I'd rather not. I'd rather deliver vaginally. Um, I also feel like this baby is rather large. <laughs> Harlow is nine pounds, 10 ounces. So um, I grow big babies. Harlow is also two weeks past due. So uh, I could literally have this baby at any time now, being at 36, 36 weeks. Uh, so we will see, but that's kind of like a quick over, like overview of what, how I'd like to see it go. I'd like to do the birth center. I think I'd like to do it naturally. I think it'd be really interesting to have had one epidural and one natural and just kind of see what, what I prefer in terms of like what's healthier for my baby, probably natural, but like what's more comfortable for me and like also just remembering things because I remember having that epidural it was really nice because I felt like I was able to be I mean I was exhausted from being in labor for almost a week but I was able to like be more present and like remember things and like be somewhat comfortable you know as comfortable as you can be in the situation um so I don't know if I will prefer that over a natural birth I'm very interested so I don't I don't know um so I'm just gonna see if it's all going well I'll be at the birth center 
if it's not going how it's supposed to go, I will be at the hospital, but they were right next to each other. Um, another thing that I really liked about this hospital is they do like a locally sourced like organic brunch for you the next day is like a celebratory brunch, which that's how I want to be treated after I have a baby. <laughs> not at Scripps where my, I'm, I'm literally laying in bloody sheets still and my trash is overflowing with no AC. And I have like the worst cafeteria food I've ever had. And my husband's not allowed to order um, because the insurance won't cover that until the baby's like 24 hours or something like that. There was something weird. Um, but anyways, I don't want to make this video super, super duper long. So if you have any other questions that I did not um, touch on, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll answer as many as I possibly can. But that's kind of where we're at. That's kind of the birth plan. And um, yeah, I think that's kind of everything I meant to hit. I am kind of like foggy brained right now. Like I feel like I'm just like kind of in a little bit of a uh, an exhausted fog right now. So there's that. Um, so hopefully I got everything out the way that I wanted to. And I, I swear I'm going to turn the camera off and be like, oh shit, I forgot to say the one thing. But anyways, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will get to them um, and try and answer them as fast as I can. And um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. I will see you in the next video. If you have any requests for videos, let me know. I want to do like a, what's in my labor bag or what's in my hospital bag. Um, I wanted to talk about breastfeeding and my plan for that and how it was with Harlow because I've been meaning literally since she was born to make a video about my experience. Um, I thought you'd find it useful or helpful like if you've struggled with breastfeeding or maybe you're pregnant with your first or whatever so anyways um yeah thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next video bye